Now, again, really quickly, thinking about how to use this other one to prove something is true. What do we call this? Does anyone know? We've actually um, talked about this briefly before. When you're using the negation, we call this proof by contradiction. contradiction. Very good. Now, the reason why I did this one second, even though we learnt about this idea earlier, is because the logic of it's much less straightforward. Here it's just like, tell me what the contrapositive is, and then off you go. Okay? How do we do this with the negation? It's all in the name, isn't it? Right? We want to try and start with the negation. You lead to a contradiction, and then you're like, well, this can't be true, so the negation's false, which means the original statement is true. Make sense? So let's do, I think, I, I think I'm going to fit it. Let's do another classic example. It's so classic, it's literally like word for word in the syllabus. We want to prove that log base 2 of 5, and you could have picked a whole bunch of different numbers, but this is kind of like a classic one. Prove that this is irrational. Now this time, rather than walking you through this, partly because this is so quick, right? I'm going to let you have a little more time to play with this one. But I will just remind you of what's the framework for this, okay? We are going to try and prove this by contradiction. What's an irrational number again? Something, irrational. Something you can reach in the format as m over n. Very good. So irrational means it's not rational. And of course, rational means you could say it is a ratio. That's why the word is what it is, okay? Now, this is log base 2 of 5. 2.32192809 and so on. Oh. Okay. Now, <laughs> the comes in fight. Now, we know that rational numbers can have very, very long decimal expansions, but eventually they will repeat or they'll terminate, right? It's like <laughs> after this, I just decided to stop. I wanted to have a lot of decimals, just not that many. This does go on forever, uh, but who knows? Like maybe it just takes a million decimal places and then it starts repeating again. We can prove that that's actually not the case without going to any number of decimals. That was a spoiler, by the way. You don't need any decimal notation for this. To prove something by contradiction, we've got to start with the negation. Just like with this, we've got to state the negation quite clearly, know what we're dealing with there. As the name suggests, you want to lead from that negation to something contradictory. Try your hand at it. Give you maybe five minutes, five to ten minutes to have a play, and then we'll come back together. Good luck. Right, so let's, uh, let's see if we can pack this into something which makes sense or doesn't make sense. Fun fact, the, um, the Latin name for proof by contradiction is delightful. It is reductio ad absurdum. You're like, expelliarmus. Like, what does that mean? You're trying to reduce your argument to something absurd, ridiculous, contradictory. And then you can say... If it's, if it's contradictory, then the premise you began with can't be true. So we know that negation and the original implication have to have opposite truth values. And that's, that's the guts of our proof. Let's have a go. Most of you have gotten this far, pretty sure. Uh, log base 2 of 5 is, to be the negation, rational. rational. That's the opposite, right? If it's not irrational, it's rational. So if I start from this, what I want to try and do is go from here to something that I know is not true. And then that's, that means that the original thing must be true. Okay? So to be rational, and I kind of clued you into this, right? I should be able to write this, log base 2 of 5. I should be able to write it as a ratio between two integers. Do you agree with that? I should be able to say it's, for example, a over b. You might have used m and n, you might have used p and q, it doesn't matter. I do need to say what kinds of numbers a and b are. What kind of numbers could a and b be? Now, it's a natural thing to say a, b are integers. Uh, in fact, that is like all rational numbers fit this quality. However, I'm going to say a little bit further than that because I actually know like the integers are a big set of numbers. Well, it's an infinitely large set of numbers. Actually, half of it is not interesting to me because I know the value, the decimal of expansion of log base 2 of 5 already. So for reasons that I hope we come clear in a minute, I'm going to actually restrict this 
to the positive integers. Some people will say uh, the natural numbers. Uh, it's a bit tricky there because some people include zero in the natural numbers, some people do not. So I'm just going to make it completely unambiguous. I'm talking one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. All right. I've made a statement that leads from my negation. What can I do with this? And the answer is. Uh, not a whole lot, and maybe you guys are trying that throw things against the wall approach and see what sticks. How could you rewrite this log equation to look like anything else so you can manipulate it? 5 is equal to 2 to the power a over z. 5 is equal to, there's the base from my log, and then I raise it to my power, because that's what logarithmic notation means. Okay, this is good, this is true. Several of you got to this point, and you're like, yeah, but now what? Like, <laughs> great, but how do I get from here to something nonsensical? What could I do with this? Vrain, what did you go to, to go to next? Raised everything to the power B. So in other words, what you've done is, is this? Is that what you've done? Okay. So once you do this step, right, what do you end up with on the left-hand side? 5 to the power of B. What do you end up with on the right-hand side? Yeah, these, these b's will cancel, so you end up with this. Now, I wonder how many of you got to this point and thought, and? <laughs> um, where do I go with this? Now, just because I've run out of space down here, I'm just going to talk this out with you. This is the contradictory line. This is the absurd thing here, right? What are the powers of 2? Uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on, right? What are the powers of 5? 525, 125, 625. You know what you can tell me instantly about all the powers of 2? They're all even. They're all even. Of course they are all even because the only factors they have are going to come from 2, which is an even number. And what can you tell me about all the powers of 5? They're all going to be odd because you're starting with an odd factor and that's all you're multiplying by again and again and again. So what I'm saying is there's some number that's odd. <laughs> It's equal to some other number that's even. I've arrived. This is my contradict, and that's what I'm going to state underneath this. Since, since I can get that contradiction, and you should right away write, you know, I've got the left-hand side being odd and the right-hand side apparently being even, that is the substance of my contradiction. That means our premise can't possibly be true because it leads to this absurd situation. The premise is false. The negation is false. That means the original implication is true. Are you happy with the logic of how that flows? And like I said, this is a classic. It's in the syllabus. Uh, this particular one, mercifully, it's short, but you do need to understand how it works.